Hi, my name is Katherine Gomes and I am the author of Exploring Creation with Mathematics, an elementary math series for homeschoolers put out by Apologia. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of level four. Level four of the series is what would typically be considered a full year of fourth grade math. In order to complete this level, you need to purchase two books. This is the student book. It has everything that your child needs to do the activities, learn the lessons, and their practice pages are in here. They write right in this. And the teaching guide answer key. This is everything that you need from the answers, which are put right on top of the thumbnails of the student pages, notes on every lesson, ideas for how to take things further or make it more accessible to your child. And probably most importantly, all the tear out pages for the activities are in the back of this book. So you need to grab both of these. Also, you need um, some supplies for the activities. There's a complete list. Most of it is household items, but there are a few math specific manipulatives and I wanna show you those real quick. You'll need linking cubes. These will look familiar to you if you've done levels one through three. Base 10 blocks. These come in a set. The flats represent 100. The rods represent 10 and the little cubes represent one. So a set of base 10 blocks. Pattern blocks look like this. They come in all different varieties. Fraction tiles. They're just these little tiles that show the different fractions. And then for the geometry units, you'll need a protractor and a compass. All right, let's take a look inside. What's covered in level four? There's a lot of great mathematics in this level. We start with a unit on numbers and place value. A lot of that overlaps with what was covered in level three, but we're going like a little bit richer and the review is also helpful for kids. The numbers are bigger and we're expanding on what they already know. Then they do a unit on multiplication. Then we move to a unit on geometry and that's followed by a unit on division. I intentionally put geometry in the middle of multiplication and division because multiplication and division can be a little more taxing and I wanted kids to have that visual break with geometry. Then we have a unit on measurement, so important in mathematics and in science. And finally, we end with a great unit on fractions and decimals. The science connection for this level is sea creatures and we had a blast. Um, you'll see lots of ocean related images. This is a whole part where they do word problems on the Great Lakes. I just had so much fun tying in that connection. Here's a unit project at the end of unit one where they plan a deep sea exploration. So they're using the mathematics that they just learned to plan a trip into like the Mariana Trench or something like that. Uh, it really was um, absolutely delightful. And we had fun with all the images and things like that. I put all my favorite sea creatures in here. Okay, so um, if you're familiar with Apologia Math, you'll know the flow, but every lesson follows a similar flow. We start with an activity, something hands-on, something more tangible and fun. In this one, they tear this page out of the parent uh, teaching guide answer key, and they cut out these factors and they organize them, and it leads right into the lesson on common factors. So this is tied to this. So you have your activity, then you have your lesson, and then you will have your practice. And the kids write right in this book. So that's the flow of the lessons, activity, lesson, practice. My favorite unit, I just wanna show you as a sneak peek in here, of this book is probably fractions and decimals, the last unit. We had so much fun making the fractions really visual, really concrete, sometimes edible, which I thought would just really set kids up for success since not every kid loves fractions. So we just had so much fun with these number lines and um, making it really colorful and easy for kids to grasp. Now there are two new features in this level that aren't in levels uh, one through three. One is the problem solving sections. So in each unit, there's one lesson that has kids work on problem solving. In this one, it's these toothpick puzzles and they have to figure out how to move toothpicks to make different images. This is a key, key, key skill in mathematics and the emphasis in this is the process kids are going through. It's not like addition skills or multiplication skills, but more about their systematic thinking and presenting what they did. The other new feature takes us into this teaching guidebook 
we added optional chapter tests and they are in the back. After the activity tear out pages, you will find an optional chapter test for each chapter. Okay, this is directly because people were asking me for this. You can skip it if you don't wanna do it, but it's a great way to just check and see how your kid's doing if you feel you need that, all right? Also in this book are, of course, all the answers. We made it super easy for you because we put the answers right on top of thumbnails of the page. We have notes to you on each lesson, but I also write lots of notes just about how to teach math, um, what's essential in each unit. And there's a skills practice in each unit where the kids practice a specific skill, like adding three digit numbers here is the one for unit one. And that's all explained in the teaching guide, not just explained, but also I tell you, here's some games, here's some fun ways to practice. All right, so that's level four of exploring creation with mathematics. I wanted to let you know why we decided to put chapter tests in level four of exploring creation with mathematics. So if you've been using levels one through three, you know that we do not have tests, but we added them starting in this level and we have them in level five and level six as well. So um, the idea came from all of you, to be honest, many families were messaging us and asking us about tests. But the main reason that I added them in starting in level four is because the content gets broader. So in levels one through three, the content, the math content overlaps more. And so I really felt that the unit projects were a great assessment and you could really be keeping a pulse on how your child was doing with mastering the mathematics. And I'm also a little hesitant about testing when kids are really young. But starting in level four, it gets broader. And so you're not always gonna have a unit project where you see lots of the content from that unit all being assessed in the project. Now, before I say anything else, let me just say loud and clear, these tests are optional. We decided to put them in because after going back and forth, we realized, hey, let's give them to families. The parents who want to use them will, and the parents who don't want to use them can just leave them in the book. So feel no pressure. Um, if you use them, I would not use them as a grade. I would use it as a resource to see how your child is doing with mastering the content and be sure to message that to them. So let me just show you where they are. They're in the teaching guide and after the tear out activity pages that you're familiar with, if you've used the other levels, we've just popped them in the back. There's one for each chapter okay and you can also print these off the book extras website they're like one maybe two pages in some cases that has more to do with how big the math problems are than like how much is on them if a chapter is also at the end of a unit we added a skills practice assessment and i'm really excited about this one so this means that if they were also practicing multiplication in the skills practice there's gonna be some multiplication facts that they have to answer for you. So yeah, those are just there so you can assess if they miss things on those, maybe you loop back, fold that into your skills practice, and we're hoping that it blesses and serves you.